Hi, and welcome to section two. In this section, we are going to understand the KTOR life cycle. We could say that the Kotlin coroutines are the backbone of KTOR. So let's start with that. So what is a coroutine? You can think of a coroutine as a job that needs to be run. This job can be run on the same pool of threads as other jobs without blocking the thread. A coroutine in Kata uses the Kotlin library kotlinx.coroutines. It runs in a context. Many coroutines can share a context and thereby a pool of threads. Kata uses coroutines through the framework, which is why it performs so well. A coroutine function is decorated with suspend. Other suspend functions can only be run from suspend functions. A coroutine is usually started with the launch function in the default context. A coroutine can be tested or run by the main function by using the run blocking function. This should only be used for testing purposes. Coroutine context. A context is a pool of threads and there are some context built into the framework. The first one is called default. Number of threads equals to number of CPU cores. Use this thread for calculations or if uncertain, which context to use. The IO context is used for REST communication or for storing data to a file or database. And the number of threads is 64 by default or the number of cores, whichever is largest. The main context. This is usually one thread and it's mainly used for in Android apps to interact with the user interface. Here we have a drawing of a custom thread pool context with four threads. We could also have used one of the built-in dispatches like main, IO, or default instead. We have a number of coroutines which shares the threads in a non-blocking asynchronous manner. We can have hundreds of, of thousands of, of coroutines with very low uh, performance impact. Let us create some code examples. So I'm pressing File, New, Project. I'm choosing Kata, and I don't need to enable any of the features right now. We actually just need a project that can run Kotlin because this, the coroutines are a Kotlin feature. Next, and I'll name this coroutine demo like this. Finish this window. And then now I'll navigate to the application.kt and I'll comment the main function. I'll create a new Kotlin file right here. I will name this coroutines. Here I'll create a new main function, function main. It takes some arguments, which an array of strings. And I'll set this to run blocking. That means that now we are actually blocking all the, the code that we have inside the curly brackets until all of the coroutines has been run. Furthermore, I want to set up a coroutine scope or a coroutine context. So I write with context like this. And here I will use one of the built-in dispatches and I'll use the IO dispatcher. This will give us up to access to up to 64 threads in here, I would like to launch a new coroutine. I do that by writing launch. And launch will always run coroutine within the current scope. So that means that it will take the parent scope, which is dispatches.io. And then I can write my code inside the curly brackets. But first of all, I would like to create a new function. And this needs to be a suspend function because then I can call other suspend functions. So I will call this uh, first coroutine. First coroutine like this. Suspend fun. First coroutine. And in here, I would like to start with the calling delay. So I would like to delay the execution a little bit. This will not block the thread or anything. It will just delay this coroutine that I'm in right here. So let me delay this with a random. That's next long and i will use modulus and then 2000 that means that's up to two seconds 
that random number of milliseconds up to 2,000. That means up to two seconds can we wait for this coroutine to run. Then I want to print out something um, first, and then I want to print out an ID. I would like to add an ID actually to this coroutine because I would like to spawn a lot of them. So here we have an ID, which is of type integer, it. So up here we can launch first coroutine just once, just to see how it works. So I'll just give it ID one. And when we're done with the coroutines, then we can print line something in the main function right here. That could be end of main function. And furthermore, we could uh, also print out when we are done with uh, setting up all the coroutines in our context. That means that the done with the context. So let us run the program and see what happens now. First, we get done with the context that has been set up. Now we have launched a coroutine, which is placed in the dispatcher.io context. And then after a delay that has been defined right here, then we are printing out the first and then the ID right here. And then in the end, we are done with our main function right here. So there was one coroutine launched there. Let us try to launch like a 100,000 coroutines. But that can be done by writing 100 underscored some zeros right here. This is 100,000. And let us reformat the code. So now we're repeating this launch 100,000 times. And instead of uh, applying, giving the ID as an argument, then we will give it instead, because that will be the current uh, iteration number right here that we got from the repeat. So let us run main function, run. And now I can actually see, now we have 100,000 runs of our coroutine, and we maximum, we waited a total of maximum two seconds because uh, that was what uh, probably the longest time that we could wait. And then all of them uh, run whenever there was a time for it. So if we did the same with threads, then we would consume a lot of resources to do that. We can also try with 200,000. So, and we can continue. We could also launch another coroutine in here if that's what we wanted to. We have the parent context and the parent context scope set right here with dispatches IO. So this is it about coroutines.